So today's job is to rebuild a Sea Star helm pump off a boat. It's number HH5273. Start off by unscrewing the actual reservoir filler cap and then drain all hydraulic fluid out. So now we have to remove the steering wheel. This is just a plastic cover. Remove that. Undo the nut, normal thread, and it's on a taper shaft uh, with a woodruff key holding it in place. So you can either hold it, tap the shaft, or get an extractor on it, whichever suits your purposes best. So this one has got a 24 mil nut. Okay. Now we'll get the copper hammer and we'll get the tap out. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to tap off. There you go. Okay, steering wheel removed. <clears throat> now we've just got this actual, what do you call it, collet. This is the bit where you might need an extractor to get it removed because this is on the taper shaft, as I say, with the woodruff key holding it in place. There you go. Nicely pulled off. They're usually much more difficult than that to get off, to be honest. Okay, now we're going to take the, hump, the whole of the pump apart, starting with... Okay, next we need to remove the six Allen bolts from the back of the helm pump. Now, usually at this stage, when you actually break them apart, because it breaks apart on this edge here, there'll be all kinds of hydraulic fluid coming out to make sure you've got a rag underneath. Okay, so as you can see, it's now popped apart. I'm going to gently, gently, gently lift it out. Okay. All right, let's put that down for a second. Now, if you look inside there, there's two cushions filled with hydraulic fluid. Make sure you put them back in when you finish to start to rebuild it. Then got your bearing. And this is the actual pump. Yeah, they're all moving quite freely. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, punch mark on the outside here, and then count these round in clockwise order so I get them back in the same positions. So, right, there's a punch mark there. So that will be 12 o'clock. one o'clock, etc. Okay, all the pistons are taken out. Now we've got to lift out the center rotor. And be careful because there's actually bearings here. So, that bearing was that way round. <clears throat> in here, you'll find there's a washer. So let's keep them in the correct order. Okay, there's the other washer. Okay, so that's everything removed from that. Okay, let's take this out now. It's, this is on seal, so it's a bit awkward to come out. Okay, so it's lifted out. And as you can see, all these little seals are the ones we're gonna replace. Okay, let's give it a clean up. Okay, let's replace our first seal. You have to remove this inspection cover here at the top. There's the seal that needs to be replaced. This is the seal that always fails on the helm pump and you get the dribble from the steering wheel coming down. That's the important one to replace. Okay, we'll clean that up, replace the seal, put the end cover back on again. So this is the aftermarket seals kit I bought off uh, Amazon. As you can see, it's for this particular pump and it comes with all the actual tools to do the fitting as well. Um, as of 2023, I think it was about 56 quid. First of the new seals is in. Remember this cover here is only plastic. So when you tighten these screws, just literally, just finger tight. Otherwise you'll distort the plastic and actually potentially crack it as well. 
Now let's start taking the actual hub apart itself. So these just pull out. A bit stiff, but there you go. Be careful not to damage them. Now sitting below each one should be a spring and a ball bearing. There they are. Okay, now we need to give all this a clean before we actually change these seals and rebuild it. Okay, I've put the new seals on the tubes here. They're all looking good. The springs are all in good nick. You need to make sure the seating faces inside this boss here are all clean and there's no rust on them. And also that the actual ball bearings are clean and no rust marks on them. If there's any rust or marks on them, then replace them. Otherwise, it won't make a perfect seal at the bottom here. Now it's time to rebuild it. So, ball bearings, copper face down, copper face down, gently push them in, gently push them in. Okay, that's all rebuilt. Ready to go back in the hub. If you actually look, you can see ball bearings moving to the side. Okay, all working perfect. Okay, the next job is to remove these end caps here and also these caps here. They just all screw out very easily. These just come out. Now on these ones, be careful because it lifts out. You're going to find again a spring and a ball bearing. Do both sides. Now I don't know if you can see, but if you look down inside there, there's a seal in the bottom here, right down on the bottom there that needs to come out. Okay, so we're now going to try and get it with the pick. Here we go. Out. We go now the cap should come out and also the piston in the middle comes out okay now we're going to clean all the parts up and then reassemble it with the new o-rings when i was inspecting the um ball bearings out of these they actually look quite scuffed and damaged so what i'm doing is i'm going to replace those I suspect it's because they've rusted a little bit around the edges. So they measure eight millimeter. So there's another pair of eight millimeter ball bearings that I'm gonna replace them with. Okay, so now I'm gonna rebuild it. New ball bearings, old ball bearings. Well, one's on the floor somewhere. Okay, now we've got to put in the central piston. And then we'll install the cap with the o-ring to make the seal okay so we start the cap face down seat in the bottom of the hole drop the o-ring in it's a bit awkward this but we'll push the o-ring down and now what we've got to do is with a nice flat headed screwdriver, push the o-ring into the seal and just work it all the way around. There it is, nicely seated. Now the end cap. You have to remember with these, all these fittings are aluminium, so nothing 
too tight just finger tight with everything now put these two caps back on and we're ready to start rebuilding the central hub okay central hub's going back in roll it a little bit so the seals don't pinch there we go central hub's back in so now we can start to rebuild all the main elements so the little dot we put in before so that we know is 12 o'clock then we just go round whoops there we go all nice and free if these pistons have got a bit of rust on them you can always take it off with a little bit of wire wool or again on a wire wheel clean them all up as long as they're all free moving and the hydraulics are working then there shouldn't be a problem okay okay the next step is put this bearing back in now you can see there's marks on that bearing so we actually have a reminder of the vice where they went back in there the way they came out there you go and then the central hub goes on that and there we go that's the central hub rebuilt oops okay now we need to set up those little cushions i've talked about at the start of the vid and then the main bearing goes in and then we do the reassembly right before we reassemble these little cushions i'm just going to fill them with hydraulic fluid just gently pumping them don't press too hard you don't want to damage it or crease it but as you can see they're starting to fill up okay so the cushions are back in there now full of hydraulic fluid now i've got to put the bearing in the bearing just sits on an angle like that at the bottom and now we're ready to put it all back together again with the new gasket obviously in there and then we'll tighten it up right we're ready to assemble now so i've taken the hub off the actual back plate to try and assemble it make it a bit easier to assemble it get the bearing in this position and then very carefully slide it in to that position there right i'm going to sit that there Right, let's put the gasket in. All lines up lovely. And now, right, we're now ready for the final assembly. Again, if you hold this by the shaft, check your orientation because that's the fill hole. Oops. This is the top. Put them together. All we've got to do now is fasten it down. Remember you're fighting against those pistons so it's easier just to push it and get a couple of screws in first and then slowly and progressively screw it down. Okay. Okay, so all you do is you press it down into position and then start tightening up. Okay, and like you would with it with a car wheel, you know, go to the opposite corners. You're bringing it down slowly against those pistons on the springs. Okay, so they're all now tightened up. Again, nothing needs to be overly tight. And just check by turning the pump. That's turning lovely, nice and easy. Now we've got to fill it with hydraulic fluid. And remember to change the final O-ring, which is this one on the filler cap here. Okay, I'll give that a clean up first before I put the new, new O-ring on it. And now we're going to fill it with hydraulic fluid. Right, so the helm pump has now been rebuilt, full of hydraulic fluid. What you need to do now is you need to put it on the bench and you need to actually keep pumping it until all the air is out of the system. And it can take forever. It's a really slow job, but it's really important. So here's a little simple way to actually bleed the actual um, helm pump on the bench. Fill the reservoir with hydraulic fluid. So now if we dip this in the bowl and we turn the pump slowly, you see the air bubbles coming out and that's what we need to do before we fit it on the boat otherwise we're going to be pumping all this air down hydraulic lines and as you know hydraulic lines on the boats can be quite long so it can take forever to actually bleed it when it's actually on the boat so best job you can do is to bleed as much as possible on the bench get all this air out of the system But there you go, that's the helm pump rebuilt for the Seastar uh, hydraulic steering. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.